Hey, what's up everybody? It's BDL44 coming at you with another video. So I want to uh, talk about Zach Levine. And I know he just entered a health and safety protocol and, uh, you know, he was kicking tail uh, over there for the for USA. You know, he's one of the key players and uh, he's going to be uh, entering his, the final year of his contract, I believe, the end of 2022. Um, and he's somebody that I think is going to be very interesting to, to, to watch out for in the trade market. You know, I hear about a lot of people, Westbrook, Bradley Beal, uh, you're hearing these different names, but you don't hear as much about Zach Levine, even though Zach Levine seems like a reasonable candidate for um, moving on from his current spot. The thing about the Chicago Bulls is they really do have a lot of talent, um, or they've, they've done a good job at bringing talent in. I like what they have. But for some reason, the, the Nikola Vucevic trade sent them in the other direction. It was really a strange anomaly because Nikola Vucevic is a fantastic player, one of the best centers in the league. And he spent his entire career in Orlando, and they kind of just traded him overnight. And when they traded him to the Bulls, it seemed like his numbers were okay, but the team just could not win a game. I don't know what happened with that. And so I, I would imagine that a guy like Zach Levine is sitting in Chicago. He's frustrated. They have yet to get him a legitimate point guard. Uh, everybody likes Kobe White. He's really, really fantastic shooting the ball. He's a scorer, and he's not a set-up point guard, and he should not be asked to be. It's more so a, a, of a two or a Lou Williams type of guy. And you just you want him to excel. But unfortunately, he's being asked to be a point guard, and that doesn't really – that doesn't really work for the Chicago Bulls like it should. And maybe that might be a part of the problem. I don't watch the team, so I would need somebody to explain that to me. But, you know, it just seems to me that if I'm Zach Levine, I wouldn't mind moving on. You know, he's still a young player. He was drafted the same year as Booker. Booker just found himself in the finals. You know, the thing about Zach Levine, he did have a, uh, some knee issues early on in his career. Uh went under the knife, I believe, twice for a knee. I'm not certain, definitely once, though. And uh, has bounced back, obviously, 100% and then some. Uh, he, he should be a perennial all-star. He should be a guy who's in playoff situations. But unfortunately, he has not played for any good teams. Uh, he started his career off in Minnesota. Uh, I think he missed his second year with that the knee. Uh, bounced back, was traded to Chicago, and Chicago has not been a good team. So he's really never had an opportunity to really succeed or show that he can win or show exactly what type of greatness he could put up. But he's a, he's a guy who, if you put him in a situation to play in the, in the playoffs, I'm, I'm certain, 100% certain, he would light it up. And he would light it up with, uh, with, with, uh, with an opportunity to win. So I think that that's, that's a player I would love to see uh, in a contending situation. I look at the Lakers situation, I say that would be great for him. I look at Miami, I say that would be great for him. I look at he could slot in over there in the Celtics. That would be great for him, uh, you know. But the problem is, is he's not a free agent. Uh, even though his contract is is on, is going to be expiring and he's up, he's going to be paid 19 mil uh, these for, for per year for the remainder of the contract. So it is doable. You definitely can bring him in. So for me, it's like okay, well let's let's get him. Let's let's see where he would go. I would love for the Lakers to make a take a stab at it. Um, trying to acquire him. I think he would fit in quite well with AD and Braun. Um, but there's not too many players, too many teams that he wouldn't fit in on and, and players that he wouldn't play well with, especially if you have a fast play, pace style of play. Um, so there, there's a million and a half different places that are intriguing. But for me, if I'm, if I'm Zach Levine, you know, I'm going to sign a max contract somewhere anyway. So for the final year of my contract, why not try to get to a contender right quick um, and, and try to just kind of ride ride the wave to, to a championship opportunity? Nothing looks better going into free agency than having won a championship or played well in the playoffs. Now, it can have an adverse effect as well on your numbers if you get on a team that's too good you don't make an all-star team, maybe your, your usage rate goes down, maybe you pick up an injury that can send things in a different direction. So it's risky, but at least if you're playing on a winning team, you feel good about whatever you're going through. You're going to be on a winning team. So 
I can't think of too many places he doesn't fit in on. And I can't think of too many uh, owners who wouldn't pay him $19 million this upcoming season. So, yo, <laughs> if field calls for him, if, if, I'm, if I'm a responsible GM and I can use a small a, a shooting guard, point guard combination who can light it up and, and really uh, excite my crowd uh, and just bring an overall, uh, you know, a gifted scoring ability to my team, uh, Zach Levine is one of the t top names I can think of, man, to be completely honest with you. And, uh, you know, we didn't even mention him being one of the premier next level jumpers on the planet <laughs> in any sport. I don't think there are three people I've ever seen get off the floor like Zach Levine. So if you're looking for somebody who can ignite your crowd as well as uh, put up a heck of a lot of points really, really quickly from behind the arc, he reminds me of uh, like Gerald Green. Uh, type of player when it comes to shooting threes he just he can light them all up real real quick and uh, you know consistently man he this is a talented star level basketball player so he's on my wish list as a Laker fan um, there are some intriguing places for him to go though I would love to see him paired up with uh, Mellow Ball in Charlotte I think that he and Mellow could be a ferocious uh, you know tandem up there like I said, Boston's really intriguing to me. I like that. Golden State is a really awesome uh, fit for him. Having slot him up there with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, that would be crazy. Like, there are a lot of great places for him to be, um, needless to say. So, you know, keep an eye open for him, man. That's what I had to say. You know, I got a lot to learn about the, the player, to be honest with you. I don't really know of him defensively. Uh, the teams that he's been on have not been good defensive teams. So I kind of just ignore that aspect of his game and assume he's just not a complete liability, especially in a good, sound defensive team setting. I think he can, with his athleticism and his ability to move uh, laterally and things of that nature, uh, I, I think you can you can get you can at least make him a competent defender if he's not a gifted defender. So I just claim ignorance. I have no idea. But offensively, I am aware that this is somebody who can drop a million points really, really quickly. Uh, there's no limitation. He's one of those guys. There's no limitation. If he goes off for 65 at some point in his career, I would not be surprised because he's that kind of scorer. So, uh, you know, take a chance on him. My only real concern would be injuries because of the knee. But, I mean, he's 100%, you know. Now he's going to have to bounce back from COVID. Um, so, you know, prayers out to him, of course, in dealing with that whole situation. I know it's disappointing. But, um you know, he, he gets rest. If nothing else, he's not going to be playing any more basketball for the offseason, so he should be fresh going into the season. So that's what I got, man. My name is BDL44. Thank you all for watching. I'm out.